Today we are in our house in the Hollywood Hills with Gene, who has an awesome company called Mav12. They do video distributions, uh, marketing on a very high level as a major distribution network, including being in charge of launch for Inc. Magazine, running parties for the Entrepreneurs Organization, which is an, a mastermind group of entrepreneurs in the EO Network, which is the group of entrepreneurs who make over a million a year and successfully run businesses. And it's pretty awesome to have him here because we've known each other for quite a while, but I've never really gotten deep into what you do. So I'd love to hear more about like what you're actually doing and how the building of a brand is something that you teach and how you can get your clients to use that also, not just in the business world, but on a personal level. Sure. Thank you for uh, having me here, by the way, Nick. Um, so basically MAV12 is Mavericks and Mavens with 12 guiding principles and core values, but it all starts with what's your strategy or what's your message or what's your value proposition. So we look at the brand from that standpoint, and then we decide on how do we go ahead and tell that story. And that's where the video production comes in, is how do we create that vignette or that story or scissor reel to get that message out. But what's great about that is then we'll take that and then hyper-target that through our proprietary technologies. But at the end of the day, we can do all these different tactics, but if you don't know what your brand stands for and if you don't know how to create that message or create that hook, then you're not gonna have some type of call to action or ROI. So that's when we really get strategic around that. That's cool. I, got, I could see a lot of that being in terms of like our internet marketing and sales process. We talk a lot about the internet marketing, just with sales letters and those processes yeah. and what have you. But I guess in terms of um, what you show your clients, what is it that you're actually looking for to kind of portray that brand? Yeah, so what we end up doing, uh, so typically agencies, full service agencies like ours or an integrated marketing company, we all say they have the same speak, but we have to really come down to what's our key differentiator. So our key differentiator is really talking about figuring out what that core message is and being able to deliver it to the right people. That's the most effective way of getting things done. That's, our, that's what we do at the end of the day. So think of it as, you know, I go into a bar and I'm your wingman, and then you say, hey, uh, I really like that person over there, and I know you're married, but uh, just say, um, or you know, one of our colleagues, and we, we, what we do is we go over there and we'll tap on the shoulder and you have to have your message. What is your, your line? And that's my job and I'm done. But if you can't close, then I have to help you close. So think of it as a glorified hitch or, you know, <laughs> or what you do, right? Yeah. So. One, of, one of the cool things about you is that you also have an amazing charm about you. One of the reasons why I wanted uh -huh. you is because you're like a charming guy to be around. <laughs> Thank you. And that you have really good uh, relationship networking skills. I would love to have you like, share some of your insights about what makes you such a successful networker. I think really comes down to authenticity. And uh, I like smiling a lot. Um, I like to be happy. Uh, I don't, you know, I mean, yeah, right. And it's just it's an ice icebreaker, and it's being genuine. Um, but for me, I always look at it as what can you do to bring value to any type of relationship, anybody that you meet, whether it be um, somebody that makes an introduction or if you're at a cocktail party. It's like how do you create that conversation that's meaningful? Um, and that's what I end up looking for is what is that common thread? Is it about entrepreneurship? Is it about you know, your favorite hobbies? Is it about drinking wine like we talked about earlier or golf? What is it that we can talk about that creates that, that momentum, if you will? But at the end of the day, I think you really need to figure out how can I deliver value? How can I help you is what I usually end up closing with or during the middle of the conversation. And it takes it from there. Or what are you working on that I could perhaps help you? And they would say, well, I don't even know what you do. And I say, okay, great. Well, let me share with you what, what we do and so forth. And that kind of carries it on as well. Yeah, I think that's really important because I think that especially when you're organizing social aspects of business organizations, you've really got to be able to connect with people. And by having those common interests, it's really important. Now, one of the cool things about both of us having in common is that we've been involved with organizing really big parties. Do you think that uh, throwing the parties that are of that scale are um, extremely different or moderately different or not different much at all for you just organizing all the social activities you have in your regular day-to-day -day life networking in the entertainment industry I think it enhances what we do uh, it's definitely a, one of the milestones that we have or keystone events but it's not the only thing that we do yeah but it really def de definitely enhances and it, it makes people excited to do a few events a year now, a lot of the people that come to me will say, well, I hear you talking all the time about these elite level events, networking with celebrities and what have you, but hell, I don't even know how to organize a, a barbecue in my backyard. Like, what are the steps you think people need to take in order to like really start building that social circle and that network so they could, you know, kind of dream to become someone like yourself? Yeah, I think there's like three to five events that you gotta go to that, you know, I think start to build your network. 
Um, and I, I think at the end of the day, you have to figure out what do you want to do? Because one thing I realized, I've, I've traveled 60 plus countries and within EO about 30 during my six years of sh serving on the global side of the organization. And I thought, gosh, I have amassed anywhere from meeting presidents of countries to prime ministers and so forth. But what do you do with that? It, how important really is it? So my question is, is what do you do with you know, the network? Are you trying to do that for your personal gain or is that really for your business? So I get more strategic and ask those fundamental questions and start to build the right you know, connections that will help you to get to where you want to go. Mm -hmm. now, now, how are you determining what your strategy is? Do you have like a, an overall vision of what you're looking for and then you're like, well, this guy got to be for business, this guy's for personal, or are you just trying to go out there, not really seeking a yeah. result, and having fun, and just enjoying the process? Like, what's your, what's your outtake? I, you know, before what I did is I did a shotgun effect. I just went out and networked the hell out of everybody. You know, and I just wanted to meet everybody, get, grab their card. And I try to do it as authentic and as sincere as possible. But what I end up doing, and Keith Ferrazzi says, never eat alone. I believe in that. I just ended up saying, I never want someone to eat alone themselves. So if I see someone alone, I'd go by and say hello. And I end up meeting Ralph Hoagland, which was the founder of CVS. I end up meeting uh, Duncan Eater, or the ex-CEO of New York, Stock, New York Stock Exchange. It's just amazing when you uh, go to these events that you just never know who you're gonna bump into. So you just come up with a happy attitude and just say that anybody and everybody can be a, a worth, worthwhile contact, in my point of view. So. How are you hooking people into your world that are such, such successful people whose time is so valuable? Um, at the end of the day, I think people can appreciate if you can bring something fun to the table, either fun, funny, or something of value. And that's what you have to constantly think in mind. So depending on the, what convention you're going to, you gotta think about what are, the, what are the commonalities that people are gonna be talking about. So that's what I would really look into. And then have some type of shtick, if you will, not, not a, in a negative way, but just what is it that you're gonna deliver? Think it through as to the theme. I'm gonna do X. Like if, when I've been to WeBank, um, which is the Women uh, Entrepreneur Business Owners um, uh, Conference, I ended up going and just saying, I'm gonna be here just to be inclusive. Uh, I know it's mostly women business owners, and my, my partner in New York is a women uh, business owner certified. I just wanted there to learn, and I asked a lot of questions. I didn't want to drive anything. I didn't have any agenda, and I ended up making, uh, meeting some of the top five, probably five uh, companies I've always wanted to meet, and it just came over easily just because I was nice and asking questions and was more in the background. So listen, look, and understand. I, I like the idea of being fun and funny. Because I think a lot of that is something that anyone could do, no matter who you're trying to reach for. Because we'll have a, a lot of people that are in our audience that are listening to this now, that you know maybe like much, most of them are from America, but I would say a lot of them are from places from all over the world, and so they might not have access to say the Hollywood elite or the the, right. the, the power network. And um, those people that do, yeah, they, they could type it, tap into a lot of what you're talking about. But the cool thing that you're talking about could apply not just in terms of business, but just uh, meeting girls, Absolutely. their social circle, and their friendships, and uh, that kind of connection. Yeah. Of personality. All you need is one. The power of one is so important. Just find that one contact that has a circle of friends. And instead of asking, what I would say, suggest is offer them to take them out to a lunch or a cocktail. May I take you out? Or could you be my mentor? Be humble. Humility goes a long ways. I've had a lot of friends that are close friends of mine now that I didn't even intentionally have them as friends. They became friends with all my friends. And now well, I can't get rid of them. But then we became actually good friends. I think that's also a, a thing that I found working. I guess for, for someone like yourself though, by having like organized structures like EO, which is something that I was involved with for like almost a decade. Um, it's something that you kind of like have this organized structure where people kind of have so many commonalities that they're kind of forced to intermingle. So you kind of like assume that there's value for every single person that you're talking to. And the funny thing is when you're going to networking conventions of any kind, and especially ones where it's like expensive or there's some kind of qualification to get in, sure. you kind of just want to meet everyone as much as you can to go That's deep. Right. Um, the challenge is there's so many people to go deep with, you know, you only have, and you only have so much time to really do that, that you'll miss up miss off on so many opportunities. It's not like you don't have access to people. You just have access to too many people. And that's, right. and, and that's why I kind of got back from a lot of the mastermind groups. Um, but I guess for you, like your time is extremely valuable as well. And you're networking with all these interesting people. And that power of Absolutely. being a connector also is something that I see you value a lot. Yeah. 
Um, how are you determining your time? Is it now That's most? A great question. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I, I, there, well, you just re represented uh, a one word that it derives is FOMO, fear of missing out. That's what entrepreneurs really do. It's like we want to do everything. At the end of the day, and Momo and I were talking about a colleague of mine uh, that I really adore and appreciate. Uh, we, we always talk about energy. Energy is so key. You can feel it. Go back to your gut. You could tell if somebody's real or authentic or if you want to really connect and have a relationship with. And that to me is so important because if we don't have a relationship, why go even anything further? Uh, I'd rather be in a circle of five friends that are just key people that can help me grow and, and learn versus pull me down. So get away from the negativity. But also, what else can they contribute? Because we're all contributing. You don't want somebody that's a blood sucker or somebody that takes all your energy away. So be mindful of that. I, th I think what's interesting also is that one of the things you mentioned was travel. And I think you mentioned that because it's been an important aspect of that learning aspect of your life. Now, a lot of people, though, because they have so little time, they can't travel or they just choose not to. But how has like, traveling affected your relationships and your business? Nothing beats face to face. You know, I love Facebook, you know, I love LinkedIn and so forth. But um, at the end of the day, just having a cocktail or a cup of coffee or having lunch and meeting face to face can be invaluable because you feed off that energy. So that's one thing. But if someone can't travel, Skype is okay. You know, I do believe in Facebook and the community and, and the power of LinkedIn, especially building out your network, that is really key. Uh, getting into group chats and so forth. But I do believe in an offline relationship. That's why a lot of times if you go to these conventions like with EO, YPO and, some, and so forth, it can be very invaluable. Summit series um, can be very helpful in building those relationships. Are you involved with all those networks also? Yeah, absolutely. A affiliated or you know, colleagues of, of ours or strategic partners, absolutely. There's lots of them out there. But you really have to figure out what is the affinity, what, what seems best for you. Like EO is a million dollars in revenue or more. I believe YPO is roughly about 10 million or more and there's different qualifications. But there's lots of other networks, a lot of other nonprofits. You know, there's Visage, et cetera. So I think that um, you know, what depends on what you need out of that. Are you more business focused? You know, EO is much more culture focused and community focused. So, well, that's cool. I guess uh, let's just leave with any last random thoughts at the top of your mind for today that you wanted to share. Oh, that's a great question. Um, I would say go out and figure out what it is that you want, want in terms of a network. Strategically think that through. What's your value proposition? What can you deliver as a value exchange to the other colleague? Uh, and then what, what does, uh, what, find one or two people, or probably just even one, that you can consult with or, or find a mentor or someone that can tap you into a network that you've always wanted to be involved in. Awesome. So. Thanks, Gene. Thank you. Cheers. Appreciate it. We're going to be doing a lot of new things on the RSD channel that I created here. I decide that what I'd like to do is instead of doing in-field pickup videos, in-field business videos, meaning that I would actually be doing videos of myself and our team within Real Social Dynamics, doing videos of our board meetings, business meetings, and actually closing deals and making things happen. In the same manner that I want to do that for other companies in the future where we could actually go into businesses and actually do in-field teachings and trainings. Gene. Hey. Hey, what's up? Good. Thanks Good for buying us over to Map12. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great. Great to have you here. Cool. Well, uh, let's do a tour. Okay. Terrific. So this is where the magic happens. This is the commanding center, if you will. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, this is uh, my office here. Uh, and I'll take you over to the conference room. So this is where we do the brainstorming. Um, we've won some great awards through some of our uh, video and TV as well. Uh, through our green screen technology, which I'd love to share with you. Uh, we merged the two companies together there in MAV12 to create this solution around uh, green screen, special effects, video, and also film content. And then I mentioned about how we target that through our algorithm on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And it's all pretty much a gamification, uh, traffic lead flow and so forth, and some type of call to action where people then end up buying tickets to movies or buying products or you know, lead flow to like a car dealership. So that's really what we do. But uh, here we do our brainstorm session and uh, then we have clients in and we'll do a sizzle reel or some type of uh, you know, uh, presentation. Um, I love it because we're on Montana Avenue, one of my favorite streets here in Santa Monica. We're right across the street from some of the best restaurants and so forth, so uh, great creative space. We have a nice little balcony, barbecue where we have food, drinks, and we hang out. Um, this is where we also at night, sometimes when uh, it gets a little bit later in the day that we just want to chill and relax and this is where that also happens. 
and we start to have lots of different kinds of conversations. We try to spend 10 to 20% of that fun part where we're experimenting and, and throwing ideas and seeing what could uh, happen, and then we try to implement it. So we end nice. up doing it here, yeah. And then we'll walk this way. And uh, a lot of guys right now, we're having a premiere uh, in Hollywood uh, on Chinese Man, so that's why some of our guys are out uh, today. And plus, it's the holiday some people took off. But we have Elliot over here, who's our director, and Sven, who's our producer. Uh, and we're looking at some original content and film that we're going to be doing. So, and this is our bullpen uh, with the crew. And some work at home and some also come to the office. But there's about 12 of us at the company. And then we have our strategic partner in, in New York right up on 7th and uh, 29th. Or if we have about roughly 15. Yeah, let me show you real quick, by the way, the video quality that we have, just for fun. Yeah, so you right now are... Uh... <laughs> So right now, that's JFK. This is all video you cleaned in. Yeah. So this is for a film. So what we've done is we went in and we lasered the room. We took photographs and also video and built this out three-dimensionally. And what's great about that is you're getting oh, very wow. realistic. Yeah, it looks just like you have a futuristic airport. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that actor, too. I've seen him in suits. Yeah. So the next shot you're going to see is CDG in Paris. And that's all CG work. Wow! Yeah. Where are you shooting this? Uh, well, we, we created it. So we do a backdrop. Um, we'll film it for about 30 minutes. That's all we need access for. And then we'll recreate it here. That's amazing. Yeah. So all of this is green screen. Really? Yeah. And this is the this is a commercial for uh, Tomorrowland. Right? This is awesome. And then we did another piece a while back. Uh, let me show this one to you. Um, you build commercials for future films. Yeah, I'll show you a case study. Um, for Star Wars. Star Wars, yeah. So this was a one done for ESPN and Star Wars. It's a few years old, so I can show it to you. We're going to show you how we created Darth, Darth Vader's chamber, if you will. Really? Um, <laughs> yeah, so what's, what's great about this part that you'll see is that we didn't have any assets um, during that time. So all we received from the Lucasfilms was their, uh, their costumes. And Elliot was brilliant enough to really create Darth Vader's chamber through references of YouTube videos and pictures. So that's what we ended up doing. And so below is the real, and the, our version up on top. <laughs> and what you're seeing is live action, and what we're doing is instead of having a plate that's static, we can actually make it dynamic and move as the character's moving. One of my favorite scenes here is you're going to see is how we layered it over. Yeah, so those are the things that we work on. So whether you have, so sometimes companies will come to us and say, we have this big concept, but we don't know how to really bring it to life. So we'll end up creating a, a scissor reel of two to five minutes just to kind of give these studios an idea of what that looks like so they can sell it for X. Um, so that's what we do behind the scenes. Yeah. yeah. Our primary distribution right now is YouTube. Do you guys do a lot of that? Uh, absolutely. That's one of our big focus. Yeah. What, what uh, kind of things would you help a client with? So it depends on what, so, Right now, then I would go into a strategy session. So if you're looking at, okay, what, 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 what is my message? What do I want to get across in terms of my channel? What does that look like? Why are we building it? Uh, who are we trying to connect with? Uh, what's the context of that? Is it a channel for learning and growing based on entrepreneurs' experience peer-to-peer? -peer? If that's the case, then we'll figure out how to build a strategy and campaign around that so that we can build you more subscribership. More subscribership means you get more eyeballs. More eyeballs means advertising. That means you're also getting paid by YouTube. It could also be that you want to click them over and go to a website to monetize on books, you know, whatever other, maybe it's classes or events, or maybe you just want a membership into a community of entrepreneurs. I don't know. But those are the things that we explore, and then we create that strategy. We'll think about a campaign, and then further, depending on how far you want to go in the business, we can partner with you. Even an equity deal, it could be also based on services, it could be a number of things. But we look at it project by project or client by client, and then we'll look at how do we integrate that. So if you have some resources and we have some resources, can we bring that together? Can we have a real powerful you know, impact in terms of the business? And more importantly, is how do we deliver value to the people that are buying or subscribing to that? So it's a pretty custom service you offer here, whether Absolutely. it's actually doing the video yourself right. or whether you're mostly focusing on strategy and concepts, but you kind of have this balance between pretty much anything that your skill sets are able to yeah. untangle and you just kind of create custom 
personalized packages for all levels yeah. of enterprise. Yeah, and I, I think at the end of the day, you can look at this. We reverse engineer everything. We look at the end result first. What is the KPI, key performance indicators? What's that goal or end, end goal in mind? Then we go back to what is the strategy, what's the messaging, and what are the tactics to get there. So that's how we look at it. We know that video is going to be one of them. We know that distribution everybody needs or hyper-targeting. So we know that that's going to be an important role. So that's why we do those things to help generate traffic or interest. I definitely am kind of like new to the whole getting quick bait. Those catchy, vivid things that people just can't help but click on. Yeah, and the number one thing that we always recommend from a hashtag strategy is something short and sweet that people remember that you can hashtag all the way along and you can own it. It's very pertained to you. Yeah. You don't want to be too general. So that, I think, is going to be very important for you because then it's easy, it's catchy, hashtag everything, and you know it resides everywhere. It'll take me a bit to develop that again. I used to talk in very vivid language, but yeah. it's been a while, so no, it's I kind get of getting it. back into yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. I have an idea for you, and I'd love to brainstorm with you. Something that Scott and I were doing also with Content Market is not only do you want to interview people, but you want to figure out how do you give value. Remember we talked about mm -hmm. that? Wouldn't it be cool if you'd say, I'm building a network as well. Now that you've done this video, you, that's part of the entry level of coming in, but we're going to have an event exclusive to those that have actually done the interview so we can have value exchange from there. That way you're going to get more people interested in wanting to do the interview and that qualify for the interview, but you're also creating a platform on an offline basis that can create immense value for each other. That's I, that, a good idea. Yeah, thank you. You know, I... I um, I'm glad we're partners. I just got equity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that... Um, uh, the, the spirit of getting people together for mastermind groups, something that I always thought was really cool. Yeah. So like in Vegas, we organized something called Savvy, which was a mansion where I invited 80 people and everyone was highly successful, kind of like Ted. And everyone could talk for 15 to 30 minutes and he had two panels going on at the same time in two different mansions. We also had a mansion that was dedicated for cooking and another one that was dedicated for living in. But you could live in all the different mansions. There's these four mini castles. Yeah, we kind of networked cool. together and we had like a chef from Thomas Keller's restaurant. Yeah. We had entertainment at night with magicians. But it was just for people that are speakers contributing to each other who want to network with each other. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's cool. Right now, I built RC Founders Club, but it's not based upon that at all because it's basically people that are not of that level yet. And basically, I'm just selling a membership site where people could talk to people, sure. they could learn from all the lessons, they could learn from my experiences, and I was able to create a program that was 10 hours. I recorded it in that house in the hills that we just yeah. came from, and share those ideas. Have you ever heard about GenieCast? Who's that? GenieCast is one of the EO members that, uh, if you go there, they have access to about 500 experts, and you name your price, you name what you want to speak about, and then your time, and how many people you want to share it with, whether it be 1,000 people or 100 people. It's done very well, and they launched just not too long ago. I highly recommend it because what I like is it gives you access to experts. They've amalgamated a lot of, say, advisors, SMEs, subject matter experts, etc. And uh, whether you're a big company, small company, it, if a subject or a context is very important to you, you're, you're going to want to subscribe to it. And, and, and the people that subscribe to it pay, obviously. What I'm thinking for you is the value is if you created this network and we all get together and you're giving us a platform to, to exchange just ideas and friendship and so forth, what we can do in return is to ask if we can mentor those that are looking to network with us to get into our kimono or circle. And maybe there's a subscribership or something or something paid for that. And maybe it's not something that they get paid to come to an event. You know, mentors don't have to pay, but the mentees do pay. And then we as mentors commit to one or two or three people, depending on how many people want to sign up. Some guys will have more ample time, they want to do 10. But the nice part of that is um, then you're giving value to both sides. Because a mentor sometimes just wants to have that interaction, tired of just doing the same old thing, maybe like yourself and wants to give back in some way. This is something that you would participate in? I would. Be Sign fun. up right now. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. That'd be cool. That'd be a good idea to get people involved. Because I'd yes. love to figure out a way to kind of model the lessons of education in RSD in the business world. And getting people that are already kind of experts yeah. in their field as mentors would be a definite way to create a mastermind group. I think it was fun just organizing trips and getting people together. I did that, Absolutely. like the one I did in Vegas. I used to do something like that right. once a year. Like I used to do it at Tony Shea's place. I did it right. two years in a row at Tony that. Shea's yeah. place. Yeah. yeah, I think I invited you to come to that too, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you did. And, Scott. and I came to it, it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. great. And I came with Tony Shen and a few others, so yeah. yeah. But what would be great is more of an organized, systematic approach, okay. where you can actually measure it and see results and impact. That's cool, you know? Um, just like what EO does with the mentorship program or the forum experience, same thing like that. 
Yeah. Because then if people get accountable. And when you're accountable, because entrepreneurs don't want to be accountable, but when they are accountable, they do it. That's the cool part. Okay. That sounds cool. I like these ideas, you know. I also could see my uh, membership yeah. sites create so that you guys can Absolutely. automate your time. Then you have recurring revenue and everybody gets value. Yeah. And that gives you the cash flow to keep having this thing going and hopefully you spread it worldwide. Yeah. So. I could definitely see that. Uh, and I, lo I love the... Uh, chance to travel again and then teach yeah. and the exploration and adventures of that was always yeah. a lot of fun. I know that my wife would uh, have some fun doing that as well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Make it a whole family thing out of it. Yeah. It's cool. And hey, thanks a lot again. I think uh, yeah, absolutely. it's really kind of cool just to share ideas with you. I mean, it's it's been so rare that I've been able to connect with almost anyone because I'm yeah. kind of just in Las Vegas, which is cool, where people will fly to you continually to visit and hang out. Right. But just coming down here to LA and yeah. meeting with you where you are and yeah. Me with other entrepreneurs, just going to them, it's like all the people who don't have the time to go to Vegas and usually they're in Vegas for party, not to share ideas and, right. and catch up. So I know, Nick, we talked about, you know, um, starting, how, how do you create your network and the power of one, just having one group that you can go to. I think EO is a great one to go to. Um, if you want to find out more information, go to eonetwork.org. Um, and I would start there and hopefully if you do a million in revenue, you can go to there or if not, there's also EO Accelerator. I believe that's eoaccelerator.org. Um, and if, uh, otherwise you can Google and look at other type of, you know, uh, organizations that support entrepreneurship. I think EO Accelerator is around uh, 250,000 revenue and above, but they help you accelerate your business to get to a million and above. But you know that's my my, my choice of, of community, if you will. And how would they want to reach out to you if they want to get in touch? Uh, you can get in touch with me at Gene G E N E at Mav twelve dot com. That's M is Mary A is an Apple V is a Victor one two dot com, and you can also check out our site at Mav twelve dot com. Hey, how you doing, Dennis? How you doing? Good. Good. This is my friend Nick. Hey, how's this it going, is Dennis? Another hey. entrepreneur that came out. Oh, awesome. Uh, yeah, he came up with a mobile app, so. Cool. We'll, 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 we'll see. You can, you, can, uh, you can interview him next time. Yeah, possibly. Are you, are you an EO? No. I'm not an EO. But oh, maybe down the road. need to. Be. Yeah. He drove all the way from Santa Barbara. Oh, cool. I know one person in Santa Barbara, but you might know him. Ray Landon created the Entreport. No? Mm, no, I don't. Oh, okay. It's, like a, it's the main competitor in Fusionsoft as a CRM. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Cool. Pretty cool company. Okay. Yeah, we're going to go get those burgers and uh, oh, fries yeah, that you've been bringing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. See you, man. All right. Cheers. Cheers. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. This is kind of a teaser for the infield business that we expect to do in the future within RSD. Today we dove into MAV12 and it was kind of cool to go infield at MAV12 and share ideas with the CEO of the company and see how they operate. We're hoping to do the same thing in the future with RSD and many other companies and go even deeper into actual deeper issues as opposed to just this quick strategic session that we offered today. However, right now it's time for me to get some burgers and fries with my cameraman at right across the street, one of the most epic restaurants in town. So we'll catch you later. I hope you guys enjoyed the interview today. And if you want to see more, subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button. And if you want to get more interviews from my personal mastermind group and mentorship, visit rsdfoundersclub.com.